Hello and welcome to another edition of Pure Science. Today we're going to be talking about aspartame, the artificial sweetener and cancer. But before we do that, I'd like to take a minute of your time and request you to subscribe to the print. We don't really have a lot of content behind paywall just yet. But our subscribers do get exclusive opportunities to interact with reporters and read special stories. And of course, we could always use your help and support for creating videos just like these. So please do subscribe to us. According to a leaked report, the WHO is about to announce or by the time this video airs has probably already announced that the artificial sweetener aspartame as possibly carcinogenic in quotes to humans. The story was first reported by Reuters two to three weeks ago and it has since stirred up continuous headlines and has awoken the contentious debate around artificial sweeteners, aspartame and cancer. The analysis of figuring out how to classify items into carcinogenic categories is done by the International Agency of Research into Cancer or the IARC which is an arm of the WHO meant to assess links to cancer. However, experts are asking people not to be worried because the IARC uses a system of classification that places aspartame at the same level of cancer hazard as aloe vera and pickled vegetables. Furthermore, despite the question of carcinogenicity popping up again and again, studies have found no link between aspartame and cancer. So, how did the association begin between artificial sweeteners and cancer? What does the WHO report mean exactly? And is it safe for us today to consume diet sodas? Here's what we actually know and what studies actually show. How is cancer risk classified? The IARC, an international consortium made up of US, France, Italy, Germany, UK, India and about 17 other nations, is meant to study whether everyday items and things that humans are exposed to, including foods, have a link to cancer. They then provide data about their degree of certainty as to how much an item is linked to people with cancer. In 2015, one of my favorite journalists and Pulitzer Prize winning Ed Yong wrote that the communication agency is not entirely good at communicating their findings. They group items into five categories or four broad ones. Group one consists of proven carcinogens such as smoking, asbestos and processed meat, although the degrees to which these things cause cancer varies. Group 2A consists of probably carcinogenic items and group 2B of possibly carcinogenic to humans. Group 3 is unclassifiable due to lack of enough data and group 4 is probably not cancer causing. So group 2A and 2B is what concerns us and the difference between the two groups is that for group 2A there is sufficient evidence of cancer in experimental animals and there is also strong evidence that the mechanism that causes cancer is actually the same mechanism that works in humans. For 2B, there needs to be either limited evidence of cancer in humans or sufficient evidence of carcinogenicity in experimental animals which are typically rats and mice. The official document, however, makes a very important clarification. It states that the distinction between 2A and 2B has no quantitative significance and just describes the different levels of confidence with probably carcinogenic indicating a higher level of confidence than possibly carcinogenic. But 2B where aspartame now is, is not fully clear or defined or delineated. Ed Yong has described group 2B as a giant dumping ground for all risk factors that IARC has evaluated but could not determine if they were linked to cancer or not, which is most things. Additionally, experts have pointed out that the groupings indicate hazard, not risk, that is the potential to cause harm, not the likelihood. Alongside aspartame now in group 2B are popularly of course aloe vera, but also the metal nickel, engine exhaust, pickle vegetables, some radio frequencies, melamine that we use in microwaves, 
carbon black, carbon nanotubes, coconut body oils and working in the dry cleaning industry, textile manufacturing industry, printing industry and working with carpentry. Group 2B is the reason why the mobile phones cause cancer rumor came about because mobile phones are also under category 2B as well as Monsanto's Roundup fertilizer. Now look at group A which is classified a little bit higher. It consists of hot beverages, art glass, malaria and working night shifts as reasons that are linked to cancer. Confirmed group 1 items are definitely linked to cancer such as salted fish, smoking, hot dogs and medications used to treat breast cancer. So really it looks like there's a link between most things in the world and cancer. IARC looks for correlation not causation. They cannot say that the substances in group 2B definitely cause cancer, but they have shown that people who are associated with group 2B items are also associated with cancer in some cases. While IARC evaluates links to cancer, it does not certify whether a food is safe to consume without risking cancer. That is done by food and drug regulatory authorities globally that certify substances as safe to consume. According to estimates of allowed aspartame quantities per day made by the EFSA, which is the Food and Drug Regulatory Authority for European Union, and the FDA, which does so in the US, an individual needs to consume between 12 and 36 cans of diet soda or more at least to be a concern for cancer. But what do existing studies show about the links between aspartame and cancer? The earliest concerns about artificial sweeteners and cancer came from a study in rats that was performed by a group of Italian researchers, but the data has not been accepted by all experts. To the contrary, there are several existing studies for links between aspartame and cancer and none of which, whether these studies are old or new or meta-analyses, have been consistent or showed any evidence of links to cancer. In most mice studies as well, the link has not been conclusively established. This is news because WHO right now is re-evaluating the evidence again after two studies that were recently published. A friend study found a link between people consuming higher amounts of aspartame and developing breast cancer and the other was a reanalysis of the original Italian rat study. Experts state that there are several flaws in methodologies of both studies including asking people to fill out questionnaires on their own habits and diet which is no to be misleading and inaccurate. These studies also ignore confounders or parameters that could likely cause the result as well, such as people who are consuming a lot of aspartame are already more likely to have diabetes because they're cutting back on sugar, so they are more at risk for other types of complications. Aspartame has also not been linked to any health problems except with PKU, a rare genetic disorder which prevents the breakdown of aspartame molecule along with other things in the body. Aspartame and other sweeteners are constantly linked to cancer in public discourse and in some scientific discourse. But the truth of the matter is that there is no evidence to indicate that consuming aspartame causes cancer. In that case, for now, are diet sodas safe to consume? From all the evidence we have, it definitely seems so, especially if we're concerned about cancer. At least as long as a person is drinking less than 12 Diet Cokes a day, they don't need to worry about cancer because of aspartame.